These AI coding agents, they don't work for my context. My code base is legacy. It's too big. Uh, these tools choke on the, the amount of code. That's what I hear a lot nowadays. Um, while sometimes uh, that is the case, I think more often than not, it's just a case of using them correctly. Uh, I like to compare that to eating uh, spaghetti with a spoon. It's technically possible, but it'll go a lot faster if you use a damn fork. So today I want to show you uh, what kind of tools I use, and I will show you how to 10x, 20x, or even 30x performance of your AI coding assistance without even having to resort to sub-agents or other approaches that throw a lot more money at the problem. So yeah, let's dive in. So the first tool I would like to show you is called Serena, and Serena does semantic search and edit, uh, so it's a bit smarter than text files uh, and brute forcing. Uh, the official docs are here. It's on GitHub. It's open source. It's free. Uh, you can run it on your machine without paying anything. And the powerful features are uh, semantic code retrieval and editing tools. So it's a smarter way to uh, search for code or search through code bases and to uh, edit code. So let's see how Serena performs uh, uh, on the original task we did, uh, the refactoring uh, session couple of videos ago. So this is the same code base at the same start. Uh, I have my docs and my doc tests and I want to refactor this. And I already have Claude code up and running one of my AI coding agents. And I installed the Serena MCP server, as you can see. And I already initialized uh, the system by asking it uh, to uh, run in Serena mode. Uh, it's all in the documentation if you are curious. Uh, so there we go. We are up and running. Let me grab my prompt. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put the prompt here and we, we can discuss it in a second, but it's basically asking to refactor it. Um, I'm giving a bit more detail than I did in my original video, like what I want to happen. And yeah, that's it. So let me start the timer. In my original run, it took 12 minutes to do this myself. Uh, so now if you know what you're doing and you have like the tools uh, necessary, let's see how far we get. So I'm asking it to both refactor and add the new uh, behavior at the same time. And it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna build a plan. That plan looks good. And as you can see, it's using uh, Serena. Now it's doing search texts, but now it's doing like semantic searches, this fine symbol thing, which is a faster way, especially in large code bases. This is a really mid small code base, this eShop on web thing. So it's not really uh, that impressive, but already uh, in this example, we'll see uh, what the impact is. And as always, you can follow along uh, if you want to, but uh, I have become a bit more hands off now it's implementing the subclasses. Yeah, it already introduced the factory method. Did not push the, push the methods down as uh, we specified in the system prompt or in the prompt. Okay, it now starts to figure out that it has references. And now it's using the semantic search, as you can see, not just a grab based approach. Again, small example, won't matter. Huge legacy code bases matters a lot. Okay. Now it's going to uh, TDD the new, test drive the new implementation. We're rerunning our tests and we're running the full suite. So it's probably done if there's no compile errors. Maybe there's a compiler or two. It's going to run the full solution build to make sure we can take a look at the code already. This is the interesting part. Let's first see what it did on the test code. Let's see how that we don't miss the, <laughs> the done signal. So yeah, I see a factory method I like. I see new tests that are correct. And it tests for the basic behavior. So it did everything what I would expect. Uh, let's take a look at the implementation. The only thing it did not do is push down the members. I obsessed over that in my previous video. Yeah, and that's not happening here. But other than that, it looks good. It 
uses a lot less tokens. So your uh, weekly anthropic token budget will uh, be way more. You, you will be able to run a lot faster and a lot longer, especially uh, if you use these kinds of tools. So yeah, now we're just waiting on the build, but uh, we are five minutes in and I'm not obsessing over the code quality. Uh, we could try that, but I first want to have it like finish the job, which would be good enough in most uh, circumstances. And as you can see, uh, it's faster than I would ever be able to do this. Yeah, so it's done in six minutes. That's twice as fast as I would be able to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to ask it to push down members to see if it gets there in the same amount of time. I asked you to push down all members of the doc type to the specific subclasses that use them. Please do that now. Verify the unit test still pass. So if this all like hits within 12 minutes, that means that I can go do something else, attend a meeting, uh, coach uh, a colleague, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that is actually pretty impressive. Impressive. Cool, we're already in unit test uh, run. Let's take a look at the resulting code. Yeah, I love it. This is exactly uh, the way I would have done it. And we needed two prompts and an MCP server. And it's faster than I'm doing it, uh, than I would do it by hand. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, so uh, that's the first MCP server I wanted to highlight. Uh, if you find one for your language that does either embedding based uh, searches or semantic search and edit like Serena, those really speed up things. It has to do less build, fail, compile, retry um, loops, and the token spend is impressively lower. So yeah, that's the first tool. I did a lot of searching on GitHub for a big .NET uh, code base because that's the language I am most familiar with. And I stumbled on Umbraco which is a content ma management system, open source, and it's pretty beefy as we'll see. So I pick, uh, downloaded that one, cloned that one, and then I did a line count using the clock, uh, count lines of code tool. And as you can see, there's 55,000 files and there are 180, 842,000 TypeScript files and 360,000 lines of C sharp. So, not huge, but large enough uh, to prove our point here today. So that is the code base we will be taking a look at. So first, uh, let's do a benchmark again. Uh, so we have something to compare it to. Uh, first, I want to do it myself. Then I want to do it naively with Claude. And then I want to start using the power tools uh, so we can compare stuff uh, super scientifically, of course. So I am going to start the timer and I am going to just do a simple refactoring. I'm going to rename a heavily used type in a large code base. So I'm going to grab it. It's the global settings type of this Umbraco thing. And let's rename it. Doesn't really matter. And now we're just using my IDE. So uh, we are using uh, Rider in this case, which has pretty good refactoring support. That's why I'm uh, name calling it. And as you can see in a multi hundred thousand lines uh, of code code base, uh, this happens, but it's also not immediate. Okay, so we changed 119 files, no 147 files. So that's not nothing. And what I would do myself uh, after doing a refactoring, I would run unit tests. So I'm also going to do that. And that's super important if you use AI coding agents. So I'm going to include that as part of the experiment. This does both a compile of the solution or most of the projects in the solution and run the unit test suite. And yes, this takes a while. There we go. So give or take three minutes to do this ourselves. That is the benchmark we will be comparing against. So let's get this party started and let's first do another benchmark. So we're not going to give uh, cloud code any forks. We're just going to have it do this with a spoon. So no additional tools, just the basic cloud code approach. Uh, this is a huge code base, as we mentioned. So uh, it's going to be wild. <laughs> uh, let me grab cloud. Let me grab a prompt. 
yep. There we go. So the prompt is asking it to rename a heavily used file in this code base and make sure that the unit tests still pass. So nothing too out of the ordinary. I'm going to start the timer and we'll, we are going to have to fast forward through this in the video in order to not bore you to pieces. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Okay, this just took way too long to capture on video. <laughs> so it got there in the end. It had to rebuild the code four times and it took three whole hours. All right, now let's see how a smarter uh, Claude uh, would handle this, or uh, Claude given some smarter tools at least. And the tool I will be showing you, or I would like to showcase, is Refactor MCP. It is an MCP server. It is for .NET only, but if you look around for the language you're using, I'm sure you'll find one that does similar things. Uh, but this one is Refactor MCP by Dave Hillier. And it's a simple standard IO MCP server. So it's a one liner to add this to any AI coding assistant. And it provides Roslyn based refactoring tools for C sharp. So just like Serena, it's a smarter way of navigating and editing, especially editing code. Uh, in this case, it's based on Roslyn uh, analyzers, but uh, that's not super important. What it is important is that it provides a server that exposes tools to do refactorings for you. So you can ask it to extract a method, move method, uh, rename things, save, delete, extract types, all the things you would look for in a refactoring tool. They are here. Uh, so yeah, I went and installed that. Let me spin up Claude. And let's look at the MCP server. So that's one is running. Yeah, so it's running. And I disabled all the other ones. And then we need to do one more thing, which is tell it to uh, use this MCP server for refactoring. You could add this in the cloud.md file or in, in the system prompt somewhere. Uh, still has to find the solution. That's my bad. And then let's grab the refactoring prompt, which is the same rename as we did. As you can see, this takes a bit of time. And then let's start our timer, because now we are starting the refactoring session. And timer is running, prompt is fired. Code base is clean. So yeah, we're good to go. Yeah, so the plan looks good. No need to tweak anything. Now it should be calling the MCP server to perform the rename. Yeah. So it's calling the rename symbol tool. Which is also pretty uh, a heavy process. It's a huge code base. 150 ish files need to be changed. But it sure beats a doom looping. So the rename has happened. Now it should run the tests again. Yeah. Let's take a look at what happened. 143 files were changed. That sounds correct. It's building the test project. And this is where like most of the time goes. Once uh, a coding agent starts doom looping and needs to like have multiple passes of fail compiles, change some files, fail compiles. So this is where your time goes if you don't give it uh, intelligent tools. All right, that's the compile done. Now we are running our unit tests. That takes about 30 seconds. So it should get done in five-ish minutes. There we go. So four minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, and I didn't have to intervene. This was a one-shot uh, prompt. So I, I just put the prompt and it went on and did its thing. So. Imagine this in a multi-step refactor process. Uh, it's totally hands off. It's not as fast as doing it yourself, but it's like autonomous, which is pretty interesting uh, as a result. So yeah, this is uh, using the refactor MCP server. Okay, so now to some conclusions and to share some numbers to put things in perspective. Uh, these are the two runs uh, I did with uh, the large code base, simple rename, and the one on the 31st. The first row uh, is the brute force approach, the just do it cloud approach. And as you can see, it takes around 
28 million tokens and like the cost estimate is somewhere around 14 bucks and if you look at what uh, changed when i used the mcp server uh, you see 1 million tokens being sent back and forth and only 60 cents so that is a factor of roughly 28 times less token spend and a factor of 20 times uh, cheaper and especially if you look at the time spent running this cloud code agent in the the default way it took three hours to finish it did finish it had to recompile i think four times uh, uh, but that's nothing compared or that's a whole lot compared to the five minutes it took uh, when using this mcp server so that's also like a 30x improvement so please before using sub agents take a look at this stuff so yeah as you could see uh, one or two mcp servers in your tool belt will make these tools almost as fast as you yourself would be and will uh, improve these coding agents productivity by sometimes even 20 times which is not something that should be ignored so if you found uh, relevant uh, mcp servers or tri tips and tricks to help these things working in a large code base please shout out in the comments below and i hope to see you again next time bye bye